The year's final major is here as the 2022 US Open is days away from beginning. The women's field is filled with big names from top stars Igor Svantec, Naomi Osaka, and Coco Gauff to Venus and of course Serena who's playing her final ever tournament. I'll break down the draw before predicting who I think will take it all here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today. World number one Igor Svantec will open against Italian Jasmine Paolini before potentially playing 2017 champion Sloan Stevens in round two. Iga could be 28th seed Ekaterina Alexandrova in round three, Yelena Ostapenko in the fourth, in the quarter Jessica Pegula, in the semifinals Paola Badosa, and in the final Annette Kontavite. Iga's draw is pretty fair, although I think the second round match against Sloane Stevens could be tricky. These two met last week in Cincinnati where Iga prevailed in a tough two set tussle. Sloane is really going to have to be more aggressive this time around and truly take it to Svantec. I do believe that if she plays her best, she can pull off the upset, especially considering how the pole is in playing her best tennis at the moment. I will still pick Iga here as I feel like her greater experience at the higher levels recently would give her the edge. Then Ekaterina Alexandrova is a solid player, but I just don't think that she has what it takes right now to pull off the upset. Moving down, things are even more interesting as first American Amanda Anisimova opens against Yulia Putinseva, who is a pretty tricky customer. Anisimova did suffer an ankle injury around the time of the Western and Southern Open, so that's a bit of a concern. Then a potential second round match for Amanda is compatriot Sonia Kennan, who meets Wimbledon quarter finalist Julia Niemeyer in the first round. Kennan has been slowly but surely regaining her slam winning form. She just made a strong quarterfinal showing at Cleveland, and I could honestly see her winning a couple of matches here. Then moving down is arguably the biggest first round popcorn match between Yelena Ostapenko and Jinwen Jang. Both of these women are honestly title contenders, as first, when Yelena's on, she can literally be anyone. Then Jin Wen has made her mark on the tour this season and has actually lost to the eventual winners of the past two slams and in close encounters. Chin Wen played excellently in San Jose and Toronto and it's a shame that she didn't make it into the Cincinnati main draw because I'm sure she would have made another good run there too. Yelena has been playing decently lately but she's had some trouble winning matches earlier on in events. Ostapenko will likely be pretty vulnerable in this opening round match. Plus, when you consider how she's never really done well in New York, I'm going to have Jang be the favorite and ultimately take this match. I'm really investing a lot of stock into Chen Wen as I feel like she has the total package. I will have her make it through to the second week where I also pick her to upset Iga. At the top of Jessica Pegula's section is Garbina Mugodutha who opens against Clara Towson. Towson is a great player and she had a good showing in Melbourne this year where she upset Kondavai en route to making the third round. Since then though, she hasn't done much but neither has Mugodutha really. Garbina's had probably her worst ever season going 9-14 thus far. It all just seems to be mental from the Spaniard and judging from what I saw in her practice sessions thus far in New York, I don't see things getting much better for her for the US Open. She does have a pretty good draw here, so maybe she can win more than two matches in a row. We'll see. Cincinnati finalist Petra Kvitova is the favorite here in this little mini section, although she does have a potentially tricky second round matchup with Bernardo Pera. Pera's been on fire this summer, winning her last 19 of 21 matches. I will have the American go ahead and upset the 21st seed because even though Pera doesn't perform her best at slams, she's playing by far her best tennis of her life. Also, the US Open is Kvitova's least favorite slam, so I could definitely see Bernarda take this match. Then looking down, it's honestly crickets. Jessica Pegula and Elisa Mertens are on course to play, and I'll have Jessica move through that hypothetical matchup. I'm also having Pegula take this entire section, simply because she's been playing the best tennis overall out of all the women here. Now, Alexandra Sasnovich is there in round two, and that could be a very tough match, especially considering how she's currently, or she made the finals of Cleveland. I actually think that might be her biggest challenge in this entire section. 
but ATC Pegula, regardless, has been very consistent at the big tournaments this year as she made the quarterfinals at Melbourne and Paris, and I'm going to have her go 3 for 4 here. The third section belongs to Paula Badosa, who has a pretty decent draw. She's projected to meet Victoria Azarenka in the third round, who really isn't playing her best tennis. This is a good opportunity for Paula to make another slam second week, but the biggest challenge will be her body being able to hold up as she's prone to getting injured mid-tournaments. Looking down, Carolina Pliskova and Belinda Bancic are on course to meet in the third round, but each have their own respective challenges. First, Carolina could play Maria Boskova in round two, who's basically a wall and doesn't give you any free points. Then Bancic could play Serona Cristea, who beat her last week in Cincinnati. Though these are tough matchups, I do believe both seeds will come through, and I'll have Carolina Pliskova come through and make the second week. I honestly could see both Belinda and Carolina make it out of this section and really take the whole thing, but I do believe Pushkova has been in a bit of more solid form recently, so I'll pick her to take this quarter. Defending champion Emma Raducanu will open against Elise Cornet before potentially playing Katarina Sanyakova in the second round, Danielle Collins in the third, Arna Sabalenka in the fourth round, Bedosa in the quarters, Fontek in the semis, and Kontavai in the finals. Raducanu's draw is not easy by any stretch, as first Cornet is always a tough out, especially in slams. This year alone in Slam, she's upset Halep at the Australian Open, at the French Open she upset Ostapenko, and then at Wimbledon she upset Svantec. So all three of those players are Grand Slam champions. Now, is Raducanu next? We'll have to wait and see. The thing about Courtney is that she just makes you play a lot of balls, and this match with Emma is guaranteed to be a grind. Alize is in decent form right now and making the semifinals of Cleveland. Meanwhile, Raducanu did have some issues in practice yesterday, struggling with blisters, and she tearfully stopped her session early. Emma downplayed the issues in the press, chalking it up to a bad day at the office. I still think that Emma fans are going to be a bit concerned about this matchup, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if Cornet did pull off the upset. I do believe the Brisk game is trending in the right direction based off her mini Cincy run where she bageled Serena and Vika. This one's definitely going to be probably top two match to watch on the women's side and I will go ahead and give Raducanu the edge. Anyways, Taylor Townsend is there too and could try and replicate her 2019 run to the second week. A bit further down is another interesting matchup in this section between Aussie Open finalist Danielle Collins and two-time US Open champion Naomi Osaka. Neither Danielle nor Naomi are playing their best tennis, as first the American hasn't won a match since the French Open and hasn't played any summer hardcore tournaments due to a neck injury. Then Osaka is 2-5 since her Miami Open Finals run. Naomi is still going to be the favorite here, not only because of Collins' hiatus, but she also has an excellent record against the 19th seed. She's never even lost a set to Collins, dominating all the three previous affairs. This is probably the best possible draw for Naomi considering her unseated stature, and I think this will be a good opportunity for her to play herself into form. Looking down, Wimbledon champion Elena Rybakina starts against qualifier Clara Burrell and could play against five-time Wimby winner Venus Williams in round two. Venus honestly has a decent first round match, playing against Alison van Utvenk, who hasn't won a match since June. The Belgian's game style will also suit Venus' pretty well, as she prefers a first strike battle instead of those longer taxing rallies. Six seed Arna Sabalenka is there, and she could have a tough second round match against Kai Kanepi, who beat her earlier this year to make the Australian Open quarterfinals. I will give Sabalenka the edge here as she's coming into flushing with much better form and with the double fault seemingly at bay. A matchup between Elena and Arna in the third round will be very tough as both are playing solid at the moment. I would give Elena the slight edge here simply because her draw is more advantageous leading up to the round of 32. Plus, I feel like she's the steadier player. It's tough for me to pick who I believe will make it out of this section because Emma, Naomi, Elena, and Arna are all solid contenders in my eyes. In the round of 16, I'm going to have Osaka and Rabakina meet with the Kazakhstanian advancing. Moving down to the bottom half, we have another tough section spearheaded by Toronto champion Simona Halep. Simo has a solid little section, and I feel like she'd play Cincy quarterfinalist Shua Zhang in round 3, who I have her getting by. Halep is projected to face Coco Golf once again in the fourth round, but Coco has to potentially make it past Madison Keys in the third round. Camilla Georgi looms in that little part too, so it's definitely not an easy draw for the Cincy semifinalist Keys. Coco does have the best overall form out of her players in that little mini section coming off 
quarter showings in San Jose and Toronto. However, she did hurt her ankle during Cincinnati, which could have definitely harmed her training plans. Unfortunately, I feel like Coco's draw just isn't in her favor as Keys and Georgie can definitely exploit that forehand with their heavy, fast-paced ground strokes. Then Halep seemingly has the Americans' number, winning all four of their previous matches in a straight set. Because of her decent draw and solid form, I'm going to pick Halep to make it out of this section. Third seed Maria Sakri starts her campaign against Tatiana Maria and co play Dion Perry in round two, Allison Risk in the third, Beatrice Haddad Maya in the fourth round, Halep in the quarters, Kantavai in the semis, and Svantec in the finals. Up top of this section are two players in fine form first Toronto finalist Beatrice Haddad Maya and then Cincinnati champion Kaleen Garcia. These two are projected to meet in the third round, but I'm not so sure that Bia will make it that far as she could play 2019 US Open champion Bianca Andreescu in the second round. Andreescu actually has an interesting opener in Harmony Tan, the woman who beat Serena. I think Andreescu will handle both her and Hadat Maya to make the third round. Beatrice is a great player, but there seems to be a mental block for her at these slams as she's never made it past the third round at any major. Perhaps the Toronto run will help her break the streak but I just don't see it happening here. Meanwhile, Garcia is probably in the best form out of anyone in this entire tournament, and she was actually my favorite to take the title before the draw came out. This will be a new challenge for her, being a favorite at a major, and the spotlight's definitely shining on her a bit more. Now, the US Open isn't Caroline's best performing slam. In fact, it's the only one where she hasn't made it past the second week. I still feel like with how she's played in Cincinnati, she's going to be the player to beat, so I'm going to put her through to the round of 16. Meanwhile, Maria has an interesting opener in Tatiana Maria, the woman who actually beat her at Wimbledon this year. Then after that, the Greek woman could have another tricky customer in Dion Perry, who reached the Grand B semifinals. Sakri is struggling a bit, and really, she has been struggling ever since Indian Wells, and she doesn't seem to have a lot of confidence heading into Flushing. We know she can play well here, as she made the semifinals last year, and I do feel like she can at least make the second week if she plays her game. I'm calling for a Garcia Sakri rematch in the fourth round as those two played last week in Cincinnati. Garcia edged that one out in three, and I'm going to go with her again to make the last eight. The next section is fifth seed Onstrabers, who's projected to meet Shelby Rogers in the third round. I believe they will play one another, and I predict Shelby to pull off the upset. Rogers has been playing solid this summer hardcore swing, making the finals of San Jose. Plus, she had a strong round of 16 Cincinnati showing. I actually feel like she's performed better than Ansjabur in the summer hardcore swing, as Ans really hasn't been doing well lately, which could be some of the lingering effects of that Wobodin loss. Meanwhile, two Russian seeds, Veronica Kukudomertova and Daria Kazakina, are on course to meet in the third round, and I'm going to have the 10th seed Kazakina progress. Darius had a nice summer, winning San Jose and then the Grand B250. Kurumetova has done well too, making the semifinals of San Jose, and she came close to having another good run at Cincinnati. This one's kind of a toss-up for me, but I believe Darius has slightly greater confidence and better draw overall will aid her. I'm also choosing Kazakina to move through to make the quarterfinals as well. Six-time champion Serena Williams is playing her final US Open here, and she'll start her farewell tour against Naka Kovinic. She could then meet second seed Annette Contify in the second round, before playing Martina Trevisan in the third, Lila Fernandez in the fourth, Jabir in the quarters, Sakri in the semifinals, and Schwanzek in the finals. This is honestly the weakest section in the entire draw based off of the players in their form. Lila is still making her way back after that stress fracture, Krachikova is struggling immensely still. Trevisan doesn't do much aside from the clay, Contavite has underperformed most of the season, and Serena just hasn't been Serena, hasn't been the same since that most recent comeback. There are a few qualifiers here, but I think a threat for last year's finalist Fernandez is Lumila Samsonova. Samsonova is in excellent form at the moment winning the Cincinnati Open and Cleveland 250. I'm going to pick her to move through there and make the fourth round, as I still don't believe Layla is all the way there with her form. Looking down, there's of course Serena, who draws Danka Kovinic in the first round. I think Serena's draw is probably one of the best when you consider she's here on a projected ranking. 80th ranked Kovinic doesn't have much confidence, and she hasn't won a match, let alone a set, since the French Open. In fact, she lost love in two to Nadia Paris' Diaz at Cincinnati, who Serena beat in straight sets a few weeks ago. 
One thing about Kovinich though, she wakes up for the big occasions and has reached the third round of two slams thus far in 2022. She also seems pretty hyped for this matchup, which is unnerving to me as a Serena fan because we all know how this woman like to play their best against her. Anyways, I do believe Serena will move past this match, but it definitely won't get any easier as she likely face second seed Annette Konzovite next. Now when Annette's on, she looks nearly unbeatable, however she has not shown her best tennis practically all season, much in part due to her struggles with long COVID. She's been slowly regaining her form and I believe she will have her breakthrough very soon. The question is, will it happen here and against Serena? Annette is doing better results wise and I say she's currently playing around top 30 level tennis. That level is certainly high enough to even beat Serena at this stage, but Williams can take solace in knowing that Annette typically underperforms and slams. Another positive for Serena's army is the fact that Serena is making all the necessary changes for a successful run in New York. She recently brought on former doubles champion Renee Stubbs as a second coach slash advisor. Renee has gotten Serena to practice with the top WTA players aside from her usual hitting partner and Venus, including Ange Jabeur and Maria Sakkari. Serena's also switched from those horrible vapor shoes and is back in her flares and moving much better. Then too, she's back to her signature ponytail, which has almost always given her good slam results. Spectators have said that Serena's been looking better in practice and has looked much fitter than in Cincinnati, where she had the tape on around her thighs. She's also practicing with more intensity and looks very hungry to make one last final push. I do have faith that these changes will help Serena do better here. For me, Serena and Annette would be a coin toss, but I will give the edge to the Estonian due to the fitness factor and the fact that she'll likely regain her long lost form against the GOAT and knowing that this will be her final match. Trevisan is Annette's projected third round opponent, but I believe we'll see Isla Tamjanovic there instead, as she's been playing very well this entire summer. Isla's gonna be my pick to make the fourth round once again, but I'm gonna send Samson over through to the last eight. For my predictions, I have Shinwin and Jessica in the quarters with Pagula moving on to the semifinals. Then between Pliskova and Rabakana, I'm choosing Elena. With the Halep and Garcia matchup, I'm going with Caroline, and in the all-Russian affair between Samsonova and Kasakina, I'm picking Ludmilla. For the finals, I'm having Pagula and Garcia make it, with the French woman taking it all. Looking back at the players I've snubbed here, of course, there's world number one, Iga Svantec, who I didn't have coming out of her section. Svantec, as we all know, has been the same player that went on that 37 match win streak earlier in the season. The biggest thing to me is the confidence, as she's not hitting that ball, that forehand, with the same amount of conviction. Before, any short ball against Ego would be an instant winner, but now we're seeing a lot more shanks. She did have 10 days to work out any kinks following her Cincinnati loss to Keys. I know she's practicing very hard, but I don't think there's going to be enough time for her to rediscover that special form. Also, I do believe Sloan can pose some threats for her in round two, and like I said earlier, can upset her. More and more players are figuring out how to play and beat Iga, and OG Fonsec Slayer Elena Ostapenko looms as a potential fourth round threat. I did end up choosing Zhang, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Latvian caught fire and went on a deep run. We can't forget Anisimova and even Kennen who could wreak some havoc if they bring their games as well. I excluded Kvitova and Muguruza from going pretty far, but for a good reason. Same with Bedosa and Azarenka. As I mentioned, Pliskova and Benjic could go far this tournament, but they are in danger of suffering early upsets to both Kova and Kristea. Naomi and Arna are two pretty big snubs here in that fourth section as either woman has the game to take this title for sure. I really think Naomi has a great draw which allows her to regain her form and confidence. She's also due to keep that trend alive of winning the US Open on even years. Then Sabalenka has had some decent results this summer and is very solid from the ground. The only concern is the double faults creeping back in, which does seem to be calming down. Coco can make a decent run if she plays like how she did in her first few San Jose matches, but that's a big if, especially with her challenging draw. She has the perfect press rollout for a debut slam run here, from the Vogue feature, ESPN cover story, and the launch of her very own signature shoe. By the way, make sure y'all go out and get the CG1s available on the New Balance website. I picked Garcia to move through past Sakri's section 
and I could see the Greek woman coming through herself, but she has to bring her game. BB could go on a run herself and knock out Garcia, but I'm concerned about her body being able to hold up. In your birth section, on Shelby, Daria, and Veronica all have an equal chance of going deep, but I will still stick with the 10th seed. Samsonova to me is still the overwhelming favorite to make it out of her section, but I'm hoping Serena can take advantage of this excellent draw. Wimbledon and now the US Open are trying to help you with these easier draws, Serena. Please work with them and don't mess this up. Back to my predictions, I know they look a mess, but the choices do kind of make sense. I feel like with the players being so unpredictable, we're in store for another 2021 surprise winner, and I wouldn't be surprised if Samsonova, for example, took it all. I'm having trouble committing to having her take this entire tournament because she doesn't have a lot of experience on the big, big stage, but neither did Emma Raducanu, so anything could happen. Pegula in the finals is a solid choice as she's been poised for a big run for a while, I feel. As aforementioned, Chen Wenjiang is also knocking on the door, but her draw is extremely tough. Simone is a pretty big title favorite, but she has had some physical and mental concerns as she progresses deeper in these big tournaments. Then having Curly and Garcia take the title is fairly self-explanatory as she's a top title favorite herself. The only concern with her is whether she'll be able to handle the pressure of being a true top slam contender for the first time. Speaking of title contenders, here's a list, my personal list, of the players I feel like have the best chances of winning this title from top to bottom. This is based on both the draw and the player's current form. And then also, here are my top first round popcorn match picks. I had slim pickings now, so this list isn't the best. That's all I have for this US Open Women's Tournament preview, and let me know what you think about the draw and my predictions in the comment section below. Do you think Pagula and Garcia are good picks? If not, who do you think will be in the finals and win it all? Also, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post the men's preview. By the way, I will be at the US Open for the first few days, so comment below if y'all are going to be there when I'm there. There's also going to be Arena's Army meetup before Serena's match against Kovinic, so let me know if you want more details about that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today. 